let you in on a little secret. One of the most embarrassing moments of my life happened at Oktoberfest. I just came out of university, so I was fit and I could drink. I can't drink anymore, but I could drink. So I went to Oktoberfest, I had one beer, and by 10 o'clock in the morning, I had vomited everywhere in front of everybody. I could not believe that something like this would happen to me. What happened? Like, do I have the flu? Like, what's going on with my body? The breweries for Oktoberfest specifically brew batches of beer that are unique for Oktoberfest. Some of them also have a much higher alcohol content. Nobody told me that. So yes. There are some things that you need to prepare for before you plan your trip to Oktoberfest. Hey you guys and welcome to the Life in Germany channel. My name is Jenna. I'm a Canadian who's been living here in Germany since 2014. There are so many amazing things to explore here in Germany and Oktoberfest is one of those. Is it that insane? Well, it's different. There are things that you need to know and you need to prepare for in order to make sure that you have the best possible time. But I think we need to get a little bit more festive for this video. Check it out. Now we're ready. I know what you're thinking. Oktoberfest chats in May? Are you crazy, Jenna? Hear me out. It is never too early to start prepping for Oktoberfest, especially if you're coming from abroad. Bookings and reservations actually start around January and February of that year, which means right now may actually be the best time to jump on your planning for hotels, beer tent reservations, etc. But first, did you know that Oktoberfest actually dates back to October 12th 1810. This is when Crown Prince Ludwig of Bavaria and Princess Therese von, I have to read this, Sachsen Hildburghausen mm -hmm, invited the citizens of Munich to come and celebrate their wedding with a huge feast and horse races and a big celebration. Not even that much of it had to do with beer, but the festivities were so successful that they actually decided to do it the next year and the following year. And now you have Oktoberfest. And I actually posted a question a while back in one of my videos of questions I had about Germans. And one of those questions was, why is Oktoberfest in September? For those of you wondering, it actually changed one year after the prince and princess's wedding when they realized that September was actually a better month to celebrate due to weather, but also because it correlates really well with the harvest season, which means there will always be plenty of harvest for a nice, amazing feast. So let's get to it. Why do you need to be prepared and how can you be prepared for your first Oktoberfest here in Germany? Tip number one, arrive early. You probably already know this, but I'm gonna tell you why and how to do it so that you can do it right the first time. You've probably heard that on weekends and once it gets later on in the day, crowds just start flooding in. The doors usually open around nine or 10. So if you wanna secure yourself a table, you better go before the gates actually open. A good little tip is to actually pre-book that table. And like I mentioned, you wanna start planning well in advance. We're in May now, guys. You can actually go online. Each beer tent typically has their own website and their own reservation booking platform. There's typically a reservation fee involved, but it is a really good tip to make sure that you have a great time. And don't be surprised if everybody is standing on their table instead of sitting on their table because once things get wild up and the music is pumping everybody loves to hold their beer signs up and sing to all of this crazy Bavarian schlager music you're gonna have to do it too it's part of the fun so if you'd like to avoid these massive crowds you can also choose to go on a weekday you're gonna have shorter wait times at the beer tents in the lines for any of the carnival rides or souvenirs or food number two is dress appropriately and I'm not just saying that because you can wear a very cute dunder or lederhosen perhaps but also because you are going to be there in the sun or in a beer tent with loads of people so while you might be thinking you want to wear your nice leather high-heeled sandals that match your beautiful dindle you might want to reconsider there's some nice hairstyles like putting the berets in your hair and putting it back in the beret 
braid and wrapping it around. I would recommend that because it can get pretty warm and intense, but also wearing really comfortable shoes. When we're talking accessories, I'm actually not wearing the right accessories right now. There are a lot of little trinkets that you can be wearing. There are some beautiful necklaces that go really well with the dundu. Men like to wear sometimes these really nice hats with feathers on top. They also have some really nice Bavarian style scarves or woolly sweaters that you can pair with your outfit. But of course, the core of the outfit is the lederhosen or the dünde. And the lederhosen are like leather suspenders. You typically pair those with like a white shirt, a white dress shirt, and a hat. And for women, the traditional dünde. You can buy them lots of places in Germany, but you can also, of course, buy them online. This one I'm wearing, I'll actually show you. I went out to the canola fields the other day and filmed a little bit of footage for you guys to check out how stunning these dresses can actually be. This dress is actually from a company called Yame, and Yame actually stands for people who love life and freedom and appreciate individuality and the quality of life. These dunda are actually worn on a day-to-day -day basis. And I always ask myself, why? Like, how does somebody wear a dress like that on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, now I can confidently tell you I know exactly why that is. I feel like I could run a marathon in this dress. It is beautiful. It is so soft and it just like it hugs your body instead of like the cheaper ones you know that like constrict your body where you can't even breathe yame is actually a daily expression in bavaria but it also comes from a local proverb that means indifferent unafraid of the eyes of others holding a peaceful attitude towards everything and in this regard the brand yame mainly focuses on high comfort and high quality of life so that girls and women have a positive attitude have self-confidence and love of oneself I I feel like this is a rather high claim to stake. But the Yame Dundu is simply on another level. It is for daily traditional wear. A lot of women actually buy the dresses off their websites for their wedding day. They have some gorgeous wedding dundus. And the good thing is they're never going out of fashion. Actually, they're coming more into fashion in Bavaria as a day-to-day -day statement. I can confidently say I would totally wear this on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you're really looking for a statement piece that you can be comfortable in all day, long they actually send packages all over the world so if you're not located in germany you can go check out their website nonetheless and they're actually currently working on a new collection for this year's fall oktoberfest i will leave the link down below and as always i asked them if they could include a discount code for you guys i will include that discount code right here and down below it is jenna10 so that you can get 10 percent off your order on shopyame.com so go check it out down below otherwise let's jump to tip number three know your beer guys you heard my story as i mentioned oktoberfest beer is actually typically higher in alcohol content this actually helps keep the beer fresh and drinkable during the warmer months of the summer the beer is actually also typically a lot less carbonated which makes it much easier to drink goes down much smoother which is delicious but be careful oktoberfest beer actually follows a traditional brewing method which involves boiling the malted barley three times over to extract more color and more flavor from the grains. Also, Oktoberfest beer is only brewed within the city limits and has to follow the German purity law, which means it is only made up of four ingredients, water, malted barley, hops, and yeast. Tip number four, be respectful and embrace the German culture. Yes, Oktoberfest is a hoot and you will probably get quite belligerent. However, please don't forget that this is a family festival. There are also kid-friendly events here. There are carnival rides. There is so much to do besides drinking the beer. But how do you embrace German cultural trends? You can stand on those tables, but also don't forget to say, Prost, which is cheers, and look everybody in the eyes. This is actually something that offends a lot of people if you don't do, so there's a little tip. And while you're standing on the tables and running around in the beer tents, I should also mention, please be courteous of the servers around you. You're gonna notice that they are carrying between six to 10 beer steins, these big one liter glasses of beer. Yes, they are actually training year round for this specific event. However, just be kind, be courteous, and watch out for others around you. You. And tip number five, I mentioned there's so much more to do at Oktoberfest than just drink beer. So make sure you take a break and enjoy the cultural festivities too. You can eat traditional Bavarian food, which can also include pork knuckle or potato pancakes. Some people like to call them up here, Reibekuchen, roasted chicken, pretzels, 
sausages, you name it. There is so much amazing Bavarian cuisine that you can try out while you're there. There are numerous parades and processions going on that embrace the Bavarian culture, different special events going on too, like the tapping of the keg, different daily activities, and of course, to end your day, there is a ton of souvenir shopping as well. So those are my five tips for you guys. If Oktoberfest is not for you, or you're like thinking, oh my goodness, the fact that I have to prepare for this is absolutely wild, and you're more of a low-key person, I would actually recommend going to check out one of the smaller Oktoberfests here in Germany. Most Schützenvereine, which are like the local shooting clubs where they actually aren't shooting guns all that often, but they create numerous amazing local events, including local Oktoberfests. These are really worth checking out and can be a lot of fun. Stuttgart, Hamburg, Berlin, Düsseldorf, and Frankfurt have some of the best ones, second to Munich. And now that we're well prepared, go on, get out there, have some fun. If you have any questions for me, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you have any stories about your first time at Oktoberfest that are even more embarrassing than mine, let me know. Vielen, vielen lieben Dank, you guys. Und wie immer, bis später.